and welcome to another episode of Hematology Horizons. My name is Elissa Baldwin. I am the Director of National Patient Education at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And today I am at Vanderbilt University and I am joined by Dr. Olikin Aluwali and Brittany Baer, an oncology nurse. And we are talking about CAR T cell therapy today. So welcome both of you. Thank you both so very much. Um, so let's start with what is CAR T cell therapy. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. So CAR T cells, these are human cells that are modified in a way that can affect the immune system with the purpose of making the immune system to target and eliminate cancer cells. Now what blood cancers are eligible? Right now it's approved by the FDA for conditions like acute lymphoblastic leukemia, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, and multiple myeloma, those are the mantle cell lymphoma. Those are all lymphomas for whom this is already approved. Is there a reason why it's not approved for all blood cancers? Well, in, we have to do clinical trials to test that number one, they are safe, number two, that they work, and that um, they can be scaled up to be, up to be given to everybody. So the clinical trials are in process for all the other blood cancers. I know that a lot of times we're looking for the targets on the T cells. Are those easy to find on all of the blood cancers? Some of the existing approved products target CD19 or BCMA. So those are readily targetable on lymphoid malignancies, but other cancers may not have those receptors, but they have others. So those other receptors that they have have to be effectively targeted, and some are not as easy to target as those of some of the blood cancers. So when looking at a patient's eligibility, what other considerations are you looking at? Yes, first of all, they have to have the disease and they have to have the target or some form of reassurance that that target is present mm -hmm. because if the target is not present, the CAR T is futile. Then they have to be able to tolerate some of the expected side effects of the process. And um, of course, there has to be some payment for the service that is rendered to the patient in terms of commercial insurance payers or even clinical trial sponsors that mm -hmm. are able to provide the CAR T free for those who participate in the clinical trial. Now, how is CAR T cell therapy different from other treatments? What makes this such an exciting option for patients? Sure, most of the chemotherapies that we give for blood cancers, they damage DNA with the expectation that once the cell can no longer repair its DNA, it'll die off. That is really how they kill cancer cells but they have a lot of toxicity to other cells of the body. They damage DNA everywhere. So these CAR T's are different because they are more are like immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. They harness the properties of the immune system and then figure out a way to focus it towards cancer. So it is, it's a complete paradigm difference. Less likelihood of DNA jam damage and the time of, um, like in chemotherapy, we give cycle one, cycle two. Most of the CAR T treatments are one-time treatment. Oh, wow. That is certainly a lot different than we see with chemotherapy and radiation treatments and those types of things. That's really great. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> That's why we like to do this. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure patients love to hear that. Um, now, you mentioned a little bit about insurance. Now, is CAR T cell therapy always covered by insurance if they have a uh, diagnosis that is approved? It should be, but sometimes people may not have the appropriate type of insurance or they may not have the appropriate type of coverage. So we often find that, that institutions have to undertake what is called a single case agreement so that all the aspects of the therapy are covered. And sometimes that takes time to set in place, which can provide a lot of anxiety both to the patient as well as the physicians because of all these financial processes that have to be undertaken before the one-time treatment can be given. Let's discuss the process of CAR T cell therapy. So once you determine that a patient is eligible, what happens then? Once we determine that a patient is eligible, we will do additional testing to be sure that their organ function is appropriate to receive the cell therapy. They don't have an active infection. 
and they have appropriate caregiver and, and, and so on, they can come back and forth to the clinic. Once all of that is ascertained, we will need to get the appropriate insurance authorization and then schedule a date for them to come and receive the therapy. Right now, most patients who receive it have to be in or close to a healthcare facility for a certain period of time, maybe even up to 30 days, because okay. we have to monitor for side effects. So, so many of those things have to be put in place, really, before the process is started, so that there are no um, no surprises in terms of patient can come and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, but usually patients who have the disease that needs CAR T, they are really motivated because they've had other treatments that didn't work. And um, once we kind of explain what the process is, we're able to get the caregiver appropriately in place and they're able to relocate to where they can be close to the healthcare facility. At Vanderbilt, we have made a pivot to actually start some of the treatment outpatient rather oh. than inpatient, and that has been met with more patient um, comfort, being able to stay in the, in the local apartment during some aspects of the therapy. So what happens then with people who don't live near a hospital that does CAR T-cell therapy? Are they having to stay at a temporary facility and move over here for a little bit, or, or are they able to stay inpatient during those 30 or so days? Right. Most healthcare facilities have a, a radius. The radius in New York may be different from a radius in another southern city because of mm -hmm. the, prog the, the, the logistics of travel to the center. But maybe a couple months, maybe... For Vanderbilt, it is 30 miles because okay. patients within 30 mile radius can reliably get to our center and if we need to institute any intervention, we can do that within, within the hour. Now, we do have precedence for this in autologous and allogeneic stem cell transplant where people are required to stay locally for 30 days for autologous or maybe up to 90 days for allogeneic transplant. We are a transplant center and we regularly have um, case management social workers who help navigate the lodging facilities because all of those have to be put in place before the process is started and there are multiple ways to make sure everybody gets the appropriate authorizations. Mm -hmm. Now there are some CAR T companies they are for the approved products they also provide some patient assistance because many of our cities have become more expensive to stay in mm -hmm. and this is recognized by the um, pharmaceutical company so they provide some assistance to facilitate lodging. Now, a little bit about the actual process of CAR T-cell therapy. So you are removing their T-cells and sending them off to be genetically modified, and then they, they come back a, a few weeks later, is that correct, and be put back into the patient? That is correct. Brittany, uh, you work with a lot of the patients. Now, having a new treatment can um, sometimes be very fearful and cause anxiety in patients. What are you saying to patients to ease their mind when they're looking into CAR T-cell therapy? So my biggest thing is to educate the patients and the caregivers. So mm -hmm. the more that they know, the less they have to be fearful of. Okay. So I give them written material, I give them websites, um, mainly scholarly websites so they don't try to go on Facebook and stuff like that and go down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. because that makes people really fearful. So I give them um, education from, number one, LLS. I give them education from the pharmaceutical companies, stuff like that. So I tell them to call me with any questions, stuff like that. So I'm just their sounding board because this is a totally different therapy than chemotherapy. Right. So. A lot of them are fearful, but a lot of them are really excited. So, because this is a really cool therapy that, you know, it's new and exciting. So, yes. most of them are a little fearful, but they're also very excited to do this. Yes, and if it's something that can save their life, then exactly. that, that makes a difference. And if they see that I'm excited, which I am always about this therapy, then they kind of feed off of that. So. Mm -hmm. Now, as we discussed a little bit, CAR T-cell therapy is not exactly a fast process, so there can be several weeks of waiting. Uh, so what is happening with these patients during the waiting period? What is that like for them? Yeah, so the waiting period between while their cells are manufacturing is probably the most anxiety-ridden for them because, you know, they still have disease. It's not like our transplant patients that you know, are, st are going in to transplant in remission, they still mm -hmm. have their lymphoma or leukemia or myeloma um, actively inside of them. So what we 
sometimes do is they receive bridging chemotherapy. So they go to their local oncologist, or if there are patients here at Vanderbilt that receive chemo with us, sometimes we will give them chemotherapy to keep their disease, what we call like quiet, um, in those two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes we'll do that. Sometimes we'll see them in the interim or we'll set up local appointments with their local oncologist to just to make sure they're doing okay. Now, as a nurse, are you assisting them kind of emotionally through this process? Absolutely. I call them check-ins and, you know, portal messages, stuff like that. So just making sure they're doing okay. Keeping them updated with where their cells are, stuff like that. Now, what happens after the T cells are put back into the patient? Are they immunocompromised? Do they have the same type of restrictions that, say, a stem cell transplant patient may have? What is happening with aftercare? So they are immunocompromised. Um, I wouldn't say that they're as immunocompromised as the stem cell transplant patients because mm -hmm. we're not, the goal of CAR T cell therapy is not to wipe out their immune system as deeply because we're not replacing their bone marrow. Um, but we do put some restrictions on the patients. We ask them to stay away from like family members and people that are sick but their immune system isn't knocked down as long. The CD19 um, CAR Ts do wipe out what we call an immunoglobulin that does um, help your immune system. So a lot of CAR T patients do require infusions of IVIG after CAR T cell therapy, and that can go on for years. So mm -hmm. we do replenish patients IVIG um, for years sometimes. That's just to help boost your immune system, help, help fight off future infections, or if you do have an infection. But your immune system pretty much comes back relatively quickly for these patients. That's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we, we don't talk about aftercare as much, and exactly. we hear a lot of questions from patients about, well, what is happening after I get these cells into I We've already talked about having to stay near the hospital mm -hmm. for maybe 30 days. And then um, that's good to know, though, that, that they may not be as quite of a strict lockdown exactly. as a uh, stem cell transplant patient. So again, if we're looking at that single treatment, then uh, that seems like a really good, solid option. Exactly. And we've actually created like a long-term CAR-T clinic here at Vanderbilt where we follow our patients that have received CAR-T mm -hmm. um, here because, you know, the FDA wants us to follow these patients pretty much for their entire life. So we, fo we follow them long term just to see like, because we don't really know the long term effects of CAR-T. It's a relatively new treatment here right. for patients. So we're following them for a very long time. So which they become our family, so. <laughs> oh, that's always good to hear. Yeah. I think patients definitely feel that, that family tie to exactly. their treatment team. And so what is happening with CAR-T cell therapy in the future? What are we looking at on the horizon? And um, you know, could it be a potential cure for some cancers? We do believe so. Some of the early trials Patients are now being followed like six, seven years. These are patients whose disease did not respond to anything. So for the lymphoma not to have come back in six to seven years means they are probably cured. And that has just been published. We are hoping for that in other diseases as well. And you know, right now we're talking about maybe two, three weeks being a long time to wait for patients with active cancer. Mm -hmm. So there are efforts underway to develop allogeneic CAR T's, which are really off the shelf, like from healthy donors. So we don't even okay. have to harvest anything from the patient. We can just go to the freezer to grab the next bag and give to the patient. That still requires some work. There are some registration trials ongoing. So in the future, we'll be getting allogeneic CAR T's. The other cool thing is um, there are some diseases, autoimmune disorders, that have been very, very hard to treat with some of the existing treatments because of side effects and because sometimes the treatments just don't work. It does look like as if the pattern the CARTIS work, it might give them a foothold in the treatment of some autoimmune disorders and that mm -hmm. is really exciting. But of course, these are still all experimental, but there is hope. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you both so very much for joining us today. I think this was a wonderful discussion on CAR T cell therapy and hopefully ease the mind of some patients and caregivers who may be looking into that as an option. Um, so we really appreciate you being here with us today. And uh, thank you all again for watching and please join us on the next episode of Hematology Horizons. In the meantime, if you would like more information on CAR T cell therapy, please visit the link below. Thank you again and we'll see you next time.